Okay, um, so I've got another little tutorial here, and uh, this time, guys, we're going to look at what happens when elements become compounds. Um, so we're kind of starting to look at chemical reactions. So guys, when we look at a chemical reaction, uh, we often write an equation, and you might be asked in a test to write a word equation. Now the key thing here that you need to know is basically the reactants. Now those are the chemicals that we, we start with, um, that are used up or react together to make something else. So the reactants, in this case, in my example here, are magnesium and oxygen. So you've probably in class, you've probably burnt a strip of magnesium, and what's happening is that's combining with oxygen. So the reactants are the thing that, things that go on the left side. We then draw an arrow, and it's really important that you actually draw an arrow and not an equal sign. So that's one difference from maths. Um, we use an arrow in science, and there's a reason for that, and I won't get into that now, but there is actually a very important reason behind that. So lastly, guys, the products, these are the things that are produced, okay? Um, so those are the chemicals that form, they're the things that you're left with at the end, the things that have been made, they always go on this side, so on the right-hand side of, of the arrow. So we always put the reactants here, and the products on the side. So if you're asked to write an equation, you just put the things that you started with on the left and whatever's been formed on the right. Now obviously, um, we wouldn't be ex expect you to know how every chemical combines and the names of everything, um, but we, we might give you enough information, you know, write you a little story about um, what, what was mixed together and what was produced, and just ask you to write it out as, a, as an equation. And then all you'd have to do, guys, you'd be writing the, the reactants, the things that were mixed together or combined on this side, and whatever's produced here. Now some equations, some, in, in some cases you might have one reactant that splits to form two products, or you might have two reactants that forms two products. Um, that totally depends on the, the reaction. Okay? Alright, let's get into it. So, magnesium and oxygen combine in this example... We put an arrow to form magnesium oxide. And we'll look a little bit at the name here, why the, it's oxide rather than oxygen. We'll look at that in one of the next tutorials. So here's basically what happens. You've probably all done this by now, but magnesium is a metal, um, and it combines with oxygen, a gas. Um, and what, what that actually looks like is um, it, it will burn, so that's combining with, uh, reacting with oxygen, and it gives off a very, very bright light. Um, and at the end, you're left with this white powder, which is magnesium oxide. So let's just have a look at, at what those things actually look like, some of the properties. So properties are the characteristics, what those things look like, how they sort of behave, you know, um, basically just describing their characteristics. So properties, let's look at the properties of our reactants and our products here. So magnesium is a solid, it's metal, it's ductile, which means bendy, it's shiny, it conducts electricity and it conducts heat, it's metallic, um, and, and metallic in color. So guys, those, those are basically, tell, tells me, those are often key kind of signs that we've, we've got a metal there, those are its properties. If we look at the properties of oxygen, the other thing we're combining together here, um, it's a gas, it's colorless, it's transparent, so that means see-through, and it's odorless. So it's a little bit tricky to find a picture that I could put for oxygen there, because really you can't actually see it, you can't smell it, you can't taste it. Um, so that makes it a little bit tricky to actually find a picture for oxygen. Now anyway, when they combine, we get this bright light. So the heat is not a reactant or a product. It's, um, it's, it's not a thing that we're going to write in the equation there, it's not a material. So at the end of the reaction, we produce magnesium oxide, the white powder. And let's have a look at its properties. So it's solid, it's white, it's not ductile, it's not bendy, it's brittle. It doesn't conduct heat or electricity. So that's a bit funny. It doesn't really have any of the properties of the magnesium that, that we started with, um, except maybe for the fact that it's solid. But this is one of the key ideas, is guys, that when elements combine to form compounds, the compound is actually a totally new substance. So different elements can combine to form compounds. 
Remember my analogy before, you may have heard of an English compound words, like rainbow is actually the word rain and bow put together. So in this case, we took magnesium and oxygen, combine them together to make magnesium oxide. So compounds have very different properties to the elements from which they were formed. And there's a lot of money in this. A lot of companies will basically experiment with, by combining different elements in different ways, how they can make new materials. And if those materials have different properties or new properties, um, they uh, might be able to sell that material, uh, might have a use with, with some of its new properties. And if you think about it, drug companies, this is basically what they do. They, they combine elements in different forms into drugs that do things when we, when we eat them or when we take them, um, you know, generally to, to get better. Um, so the drugs that, that drug companies design are just elements that have been put together in different ways, but they have a different effect. And most drugs are probably made out of the elements carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. And if you ate a bunch of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, it would do absolutely nothing. But when you, when you combine them in a certain way, you might make an antibiotic, which kills off bacteria or, or does something else that, that, that's going to help a certain disease or, or sickness. So guys, when we combine elements in different ways to make different compounds, uh, those compounds are going to have very different properties from the elements that they're made from. So guys, in a chemical reaction, a new substance or substances are formed. So guys, when we have uh, elements combine, it's a chemical reaction, and what we, made, what we make is a totally new substance, or sometimes we might even get two new substances, uh, depending on the reaction. So guys, chemical reaction, we always get that new substance, that new material. Okay, so that was a nice quick short one. Um, just uh, one thing to be aware of there um, is, uh, is basically just um, that that uh, how to write that equation. So taking um, the, the reactants on the left and then the arrow and then the products. But before we finish, I, I almost forgot this one. Um, just one last question here. How can the billions of substances around us be formed from only 118 elements? So that's how many elements are on the periodic table, at least at this stage. Um, and the answer is actually basically pretty simple. It's like Lego. So this pile of Lego here, there's only a few different types of bricks. There's, there's a blue one that's here, it's four long, you know, four long and two wide. There's a slightly larger piece here that's yellow. But there's a limited number of different pieces. But if I had enough of each of those pieces, I could still make a whole lot of different things. So even though there's only 180 different elements, there's so many of each, um, at least for some of them, that we can combine them together in so many different combinations to make all the different things around us. So most of the substances around us are compounds or even mixtures. If everything around us was made out of elements, well, there'd only be 118 different possible things. Um, and in fact, most of the things around us are actually made mainly from four elements. Um, and they're just arranged or pieced together in different ways to make those different compounds, and each of those compounds is a totally new substance with new properties. And that's why we have so many different materials or substances, each with their own set or their own set of characteristics or, or properties. Cool, I hope that helped. Nice quick one, and that's it.